Hi, I'm Tim Steele, president and founder of Microspec Corporation. And we're here to talk about bump extrusions today and how bump extrusions have impacted the medical device industry. Uh, bump tubing was first invented by the creator of the disposable catheter, Dave Sheridan, in the late 1960s and was an innovative concept that revolutionized the catheter industry. With catheters getting smaller and smaller and more complex, new extrusion challenges are arising every day. To meet these challenges, the extruder must innovate. During the past 30 years, Microspec has led the medical extrusion industry in creating the most advanced bump tubing in the world and we're going to talk about some of those tubes today um interesting though about dave sheridan uh dave sheridan um who was located over in the glens falls area of new york actually argyle new york uh, when he invented the bump catheter it was completely by accident he was extruding one afternoon uh in what he told me was his barn and he accidentally leaned on the extruded tubing being pulled by the haul off and realizing it immediately, he picked his hand up off the tubing and the result was this bump came through the water and down the line through the haul off and he looked at it and had this great idea because it was a rather small tube and he had to over mold it and um, uh, this bump allowed him to overmold and not destroy the characteristics or the the geometry of the tube. So that's how it was invented, completely by accident. And uh, Dave was actually quite a character. Um, if you don't know what a bump tube is, uh, it's a tube that changes diameter from one end to the other. Uh, uh, this is a simple depiction of a bump tube and we have a smaller distal end, uh, a taper, and a larger proximal end. And we use ring gauges to determine where the taper ends and starts. I first became aware of bump tubing in the early 1980s. Um, I was not working for myself yet but I was intrigued by the technology of changing the diameter of the tube along the length of the tube during the extrusion process. Um, I experimented for a number of years with this, uh, both in the United States and in Ireland where I was working. Uh, uh, and what I was doing, I was physically uh, uh, slowing the haul off down manually um, and then speeding it up with little uh, speed potentiometers on the haul off and and seeing what I could do to affect uh, the OD and the ID of the tube. Well, uh, doing this uh, and working for someone else was not easy to do. So in 1987, when I went out on my own with Microspec, um, I then had the freedom to experiment freely, and it only took me a couple of years before I was making multi-lumen bump tubing. Um, the image that you're seeing here happens to be a relatively recent um, innovation from Microspec. It's a 25 lumen bump tube. It's rather large. You can see the proximal ID OD is 0.350 inches and the distal OD is 0.160 inches. Um, um, it's a tube that actually, I will talk about it later again, um, integrates um, another technology that we invented much later in at Microspec. The first multi-lumen bump tube is not the image uh, depicted in the image you're looking at right here. It was a simple double D tube we made in 1992. Uh, the image you're looking at was created many years later, incorporating another technology, Microspec Innovated, and we'll get, get to that later. Um, next, we uh, started experimenting with co-extruded bump tubing. You're looking at uh, three tubes here. Um, we have a six-stripe tube. Um, 
Uh, we have what we refer to at Microspec as a two by two. You're looking at two lumens and two uh, radio page stripes, and we have a three lumen with two stripes. Okay, here we've incorporated another um, extrusion technology, tri-extrusion. Tri uh, we have an ABA layer here, Chronoflex, uh, two Chronoflex layers with uh, a fully radio opaque uh, inner layer. Um, it was in about year 1999, year 2000, that I had a phone call from a client or a future client, um, and they were inquiring about uh, multi-lumen bump tubing. Uh, what you're looking at here is a three-lumen pick catheter tube, but uh, the engineer at the other end of the line when they called that day described a tube to me, and uh, he was calling it taper tubing. And I said, oh, well, I think you really are talking about what I refer to as bump tubing, and I described to him exactly what it was. And he goes, yeah, we're talking about the same thing. Anyway, um, uh, after he finished describing it and explaining that they had been trying to get this from other vendors, I asked him if he wanted us to send him some samples of what he he had just described, and it was silent on the other end of the phone. Um, uh, he almost couldn't believe it, um, so we sent him samples, and on that day, the pick industry was about to be revolution revolutionized. Um, uh, we started with both single and double D uh, bump tubing. Um, the numbers at first were, were ordered in the hundreds of pieces at a time. Um, later, uh, they turned into thousands of pie pieces at a time, and it almost seemed like almost every month this com company bumped their numbers up. Uh, it was growing incredibly fast for them. You might even call it an explosion almost. But uh, in any case, uh, uh, this business grew at, to the point where Microspec was extruding hundreds of thousands of these every month. Um, Here's another uh, version of a double D that's actually a three, but a three lumen uh, pick catheter tube. Um, uh, it's got a 92 or a seven French OD at the proximal end and a six French OD at the distal end. And um, um, just another example of innovating a bump tube at Microspec. Here is pediatric bump tubing. Uh, uh, at the time that the adult sizes, the five and the seven and six French tubes were being made, I noticed that um, there were no pediatric tubes um, in the industry, or at least I wasn't, I wasn't aware of them. So uh, I asked my client why they weren't doing it, and they said, well, we're not interested in going into pediatric tubing because it's so litigious. And I thought, well, uh, here's an opportunity. And I talked to uh, some uh, pediatricians, friends of mine, asked them some questions about what would be um, most important in creating um, a, a pediatric bump tube. And they talked about flow rates and size. So uh, I took it upon myself uh, to start testing some flow rates using single lumen tubings with this standard hypo needles and, you know, looking for the flow rates that uh, my friends told me were, would be required. And I uh, found out what kind of IDs or cross-sectional areas I had to have um, to s satisfy, you know, the pediatric market and uh, went and designed a bump tube. So here we have images of the cross-sectional area of the um, 1.9 French baby bump, dual lumen. Um, uh, the most difficult part of extruding this tube was making the extrusion tool itself. Um, it took me nominal, uh, roughly six months to build the tool. Um, uh, I didn't have a wire EDM. I needed one. Um, when I finally found someone who could build the tool, we signed NDAs and non-disclosure agreements. 
Um, um, it was a real challenge, but once we got the tools at Microspec, we extruded a tube. This image is not that first tube. Uh, that first tube was not quite as pretty as this, but uh, it was good enough. Um, we took that tube to Stuttgart and the MedTech show. We found a client in Germany. We brought it back and went to New York City in the MDM, MDNM show at Jacob Javits and and we found a, a client there. Um, but in uh, developing this tool at our client's facility, I probably spent the best part of a full week uh, advising them. And this happened to be um, in Argyle, New York at Sheridan Catheter. So Dave Sheridan uh, really did have a lot of influence in the bump tubing industry. But in any case, uh, uh, it took us a couple of weeks to uh, select the suitable raw materials that are going to work for them in their process and uh, uh, we're still selling this tube today. Uh, that tube has uh, become the standard around the world for uh, pediatric uh, pick lines for neonates and in this slide you can see um, you'll see one of our bump tubes. Uh, it's, I can't actually make it out myself I believe I'm looking at it on the right hand side, but uh, this baby was born at 23 weeks, weighing 8.6 ounces, 254 grams. Five months later, that baby went home from the hospital, weighing 5.6 pounds. But here that baby is, it's got our tubing draped all over it, and at Microspec, we're very proud to have been part of saving this baby's life. Um, uh, bump tubing uh, in this picture, well, we've integrated it with a new technology that we discovered uh, roughly six or seven years ago, which we call BAT technology, uh, which revolutionized the way we make multi-lumen tubing. Um, it gives us, uh, BAT technology gives us uh, uh, superior control over wall thicknesses and ID uh, uh, geometry. Um, it's really an amazing technology and something that I think differentiates Microspec from the rest of the industry. Here we have a 10 lumen tube, uh, proximal OD of 256, distal OD of 0.184. It's a tri extrusion. Uh, it's got two stripes on the OD. You can see one at 12 o'clock and one at about four or five o'clock, uh, two different colors. And it's this tube happens to have, which you can't see because you're looking at a cross section, has a helical twist to it, which um, uh, really made, was a challenge for us in extruding and controlling the bump. Um, th this went through process validation this past year and it'll be out in the marketplace before year end. Microspec also makes the smallest bump tube in the world. Here we're looking at a seven lumen tube. Uh, it's a project that's still under development today. Uh, this tube at the distal end has an OD of 14 thousandths of an inch and those lumens are only three thousandths of an inch large. Uh, inspecting this tube is a real challenge, believe me. And um, uh, Handling it is also a, 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 a challenge for us in that this, this part is 12 feet long. Um, um, it's made out of nylon. This tube also is still under development and is expected to go through validation shortly. Um, this is going to be going through a new program at Microspec called Jumpstart. Jumpstart is a validation program that we have defined. Um, um, uh, goes IQ, OQ, PQ. Um, and every step of the way um, is, is defined in such a way that our client knows exactly wh what's going to happen, when it's going to happen, and how it's going to happen. Here's another image of the smallest bump tube that Microspec makes, uh, just to give you perspective on how small that distal end is. 
First bump tubing technology, um, people ask me what this is, and actually it's when we maintain a constant outside diameter on the tube uh, and vary the inside diameter from end to end. Um, we've applied this technology to coating wires, uh, GI guide wires um, in this case. Uh, the middle wire in the image is a bare wire and you can see that it tapers down from roughly 20 thousandths of an inch down to four thousandths of an inch. Um, our process, our reverse bump technology, allows us to maintain a constant outside diameter of the plastic that jackets this tube from one end to the other and uh, it is a technology that um, allows the wire to be used in the GI system and not poke holes in the sides of your intestines. Um, I mentioned before that it took us six months to uh, fabricate the tools to make this first baby bump. Um, back then we did not have wire EDM in the house. Today Microspec has three of them. We have a CNC um, uh, lathe. We have hole poppers as well as all the conventional equipment. Typical turnaround time at Microspec for tooling like this is five business days and that has uh, allowed us to be even better innovators. Before questions, I'd just like to summarize what I've talked about here. Microspec um, has been making bump tubing since the inception of the company. It was one of our founding priorities when the business opened in 1989. Um, bump tubing continues to be, integ be integrated with all of our other extrusion technologies, and we haven't stopped innovating. Thank you. Are there any questions?